Is that for us? So, um, hi, my name is Collier Di I've been in the Hackney area for about seven years, and I've had a number of businesses in around the local community. Can you uh, can use a mic, please? <laughs> well, I'll start here. Um, my question is looking at regeneration, and I've had a number of experiences um, looking at the neighbor and council in the Dawson area. And two years ago, I met Phil Glanville, and my campaign to my lovely mayor was called Parity. Um, I was born in Freetown, Sierra Leone, and I've been in London since I was nine years old. And I've been in 13 years in business, and I've had some amazing blessings. I've had some challenges, and I look at again, I look at policies and politics as a way of sustaining hope and change in terms of looking at regeneration, especially within the black community and ethnic minority businesses. I have businesses in the forest still, um, West Norwood, Brick Lane, and for the last seven years, um, I've had four businesses in Dawson Lane. What's your question, sir? So my question is, um, is, is directly to um, Phil Glanville. Um, I've been campaigning with you for the last two and a half years, and I've cited um, institutional racism in the council, particularly from Dawson Labour Bar, um, Peter Snell, um, within licensing, and the Latin economy. I opened a cafe in um, Dawson Lane. Um, Eight years ago. Question. Question. So, no, 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 <laughs> eight years ago, which again was a community cafe which included everything that comes with regeneration. Um, fostering um, a training development and looking at ways of merging um, diversity and training um, young minority like myself to actually look at new ways of fostering regeneration and actually having credible businesses. I've had a lot, of, a lot of issues and I'm coming here to ask you today to look at possibly facilitating an investigation in my findings within Dawson Lane, which I think will be credible to assist you with new policies against race, state violence, and looking at, especially when you're looking at now, um, new ways of trying to bring them together and hoping. Um, it's, it's, it's surrounding change. Um, looking at the question is um, how how if elected can you guarantee me that again with the findings that I've cited in the last two years speaking to you about the, the regeneration. Of the but you've already worked with Phil. Absolutely. So yeah. why could you not make that connection? Question. Is the question what will you and Mayor do about my feeling that there's a piece of Phil. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, well, yeah, I mean, I think it's all going to be I think we can all answer a question about what we're going to do to make sure that growth in Hackney is inclusive and supports communities and the diversity that we value to stay up. So I'm not going to get into the specifics around uh, Collier's case. Uh, I've had some evidence from Collier. I've not had everything I would need to do the type of investigation he's talking about, but I'm happy to look at that. But more broadly, very clearly, this manifesto that I've set out and it's been on every chair has said whose side Hackney Council is on. It is not on the side of developers coming to this borough and not giving back. It's on the side of the community that wants to keep our town centres the special and unique places they are. So we're setting out very clearly whose side we're on in Dulston. We're on the side of the Eastern Curve Garden. We're on the side of the cultural institutions. We're on the side of small businesses. We're on the side of people that want more affordable workspace, more affordable retail space. And that if things like Crossrail 2 happen, if things like the regeneration of the shopping centre happen, they should happen to a plan developed with the local community, not by the council, by the local community shaping that kind of development. It is a new approach. I was campaigning in Dalston uh, last night, talking to people that had been part of the previous battles around Dalston Square, around saving... Uh, markets and things like that. And I'm very clear that this is a break with the past. It is very clear now who is side we're on. We're on the side of the local community, on local businesses, recognising our shared heritage and putting places like Ridley Road Market front and centre in the Eastern Curve Garden. And that equally applies to the institutions like that in Hackney Central as well. So it's how do we have inclusive growth here in Hackney that works for and with local people, not on the side of investors. I cannot shape everything. Uh, alone through the planning process or through the power of the mayor. So it's about working with you uh, as, our, as the community to make sure that that happens. Thank you very much. Okay. Already I, I got a bit upset because I thought, oh dear, here we go. What happened to New Era? 
I was there and saved it. We, I was there on the march. I had the negotiations in Westbrook, yeah. and I saved it. You saved it. Yes. So why have I been told yesterday that that estate is now going? And this has been kept very hush-hush. That estate, believe me, I've been called by the two girls who ran that whole thing. That estate has now been sold off and they've given no, it's up. it's not. They've it's given not. It's about to be. It's been handed up to the developers anyway. And that's, that's the information given to me from the horse's mouth. But okay, we'll, we'll beg to differ. But what I'm saying is, if these things are happening, we need to see it. If it's been transparent, then we won't be a matter of tittle tattle and, oh, she said this and he said that, and you say, no, we so didn't. Exactly. You know? Yeah. We, we can all put anything in a book, Grandpa. No, we delivered 97% of Real is real. I marched that march with them to hand over those 3,000 um, signatures to Downing Street, I was there too. and only to find, only to find now later that this news is really not good. These people are not feeling good right now. So if we if we are doing this, then let's get it out there more publicly. Be open. The Labour Party has not been transparent at all, and we need them to start being transparent. I don't want to point the score here, and I don't want to be, you done that and you've done that. We have to, we, it's not been alarmist. If, if the people, you said don't know the details. If the people who are involved are really, it's like the cops they got stabbed. Come on, I get called. These people call me. Thank you. I don't have to stand in public and tell lies. I think we all know that racial minorities in this country are more likely to have their own small business, partly because they haven't been able to thrive as employees. It's really important that we think the people we have in Hackney that the council promotes business. And the regeneration that's happening in Hackney, I think, especially around Shoreditch and the South and all along our um, high streets, is brought about by the innovative people in Hackney who do things for themselves. I was very troubled when you re referred to institutional racism. The Stephen Lawrence inquiry first came out around the time I moved to London, 98. Um, and it's still an issue. And I think some institutions need to recognise that just having a few black pet faces amongst your um, people making decisions doesn't mean that you don't have a problem with institutional racism. I'm not making any allegations against any named people. I would just comment that... The Labour Party often congratulates itself on bringing in the equality legislation 40 years ago, and sometimes they are, com they are complacent about it, and there have been issues about anti-Semitism and institutional racism raised to me. And therefore, don't rely on the Labour Party to be the party of equality. If you've got a problem in Dalston, I'm standing as councillor in Dalston, as well as standing for Hackney Mayor, and I'd love to speak to you. I'd love to speak to you afterwards. Okay. What's that time? all your findings. You can't well, we're going to be quite limited if I can move on slightly in time. Um, are the candidates up? okay to go on for another 10 15 minutes? I need to actually go because I need to be somewhere. Well, 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 excuse you, but whether you wish to go, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Can you take it on with another question? Maybe we can in with one of the next questions, please. One of the areas which we've covered um, was the, the issue of um, knife crime. I think we've covered homelessness. Um, now, there's one thing which we, I think you mentioned, they were first to send some people in Hackney of no religion, which made the 70% with religion. The faith community are a real asset. And I believe with the, um, whoever's going to be the next person, because I think society as such has now faith has become a dirty word by many. And also the issue of family is not any more than um, as bad as it used to be. Um, I would like everybody's opinion to give me what they think that if we would actually use our faith community and also start value, value family more, um, how we could, do, do you think this would actually reduce knife crime and hopefully, you know, we'd always have homelessness, but it would possibly sharply 
um, reduce homelessness if we give value to faith and to family? Okay, well, I think you could I just ask um, another few questions and then maybe the kind of answer. Um, I'll come back to you. Okay, you do this before. I may not actually need that. For the moment, I hope this doesn't seem such a too trivial a question. Uh, I have two rescue dogs. Uh, one is a three-legged Indian street dog I found in Delhi and brought back here. It was sort of love at first sight. Uh, one of the discussions that I often have with other dog owners um, in the Hackney is their wish that the council would reintroduce dog licenses. And I'm just wondering if any of the candidates here um, have thought about this and have considered the reintroduction. I think there might be a lot of people who might have to. Thank you very much. Um, I mean, I want to wonder if there's a way to have his hand up for a long time. I have a question for the panel. Uh, in particular, the, 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 the mayor and our local board uh, councillors. We recently had a parking zone introduced in our area, and like, like I said, the first year, the, the, the cost of the car probably was about 110 pounds, and in, the, in one year it went up to 200 pounds. That's one thing. The other thing is that we, you know, we have a community. We are a family-oriented community. We have, I've got four children who come and visit. Now, my daughter comes or whatever, and you know, these are the questions. Sorry? These are the questions. These are the questions. Yeah. Yeah. I like you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, regarding the cost of parking permits, visitors' permits, uh, I'm planning to do some work in my house, and I just made inquiry about the license for a skip. And apart from the skip license, which council would think, I have to pay £25 a day to have a skip outside my house. Now, you know, I think, is that fair? You know, I think, can't, are we not allowed as resident of, the, of, the, of, of, of Hackney to do uh, um, maintenance work in our property? Uh, you know, I like the, the current administration uh, to take a note of this. And whoever we elected, please make a note of that. And you know, at the moment, this parking zone is really a uh, uh, joke. You know, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 to the um, I'm a member of this panel as well, and please don't that's undermine that's my that's 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 Okay, that's all right. I have to defer to Vernon to answer the three questions. Okay, um, what I need to focus on is what the gentleman there has raised. The inequality that is almost, the, the inequality that exists in Hackney today. Um, since 19, since 2006, there's been four terms of directly elected mayor. And in my opinion, and in the opinion of many people that I've spoken to, the four terms of directly elected mayor has essentially benefited white middle class people. And the traditional people of Hackney, such as the white working classes, the blacks, the Muslims, have not really fared very well. And that is important. Now, the gentleman there raised the issue of licenses. Licenses are very important uh, for getting into business, doing business, um, making an income. And in the last election that I stood, I raised the issue of the inequality of the license system. In that, you know, black and ethnic minority people, particularly black people, are making uh, multiple, you know, valid uh, licenses applications and, and being turned down, which means that they cannot run their business and earn a living. These are inequalities that really should not exist. And as mayor, I would not only encourage the diversification of the bidding for contracts, which 
in fact involves you know hundreds of millions of pounds um, but essentially um, bringing those people from the community who want to bid and give those people a fair opportunity. Thank you very much. Um, can you have to respond to any other few questions? Yeah. Try to throw the mic. Um, back to your comment here. I think it's really important that Hackney is a good landlord to small businesses, um, rather than you know just inviting big multinational corporations who don't pay any tax um, to have have to, to site their businesses here because it's well located. Um, and I think we do need to look at licenses, and maybe something we could be doing is looking at the percentage of licenses that are, 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 are issued to people who aren't, you know, the white middle class people. We can have a look at that. There's a um, there's a very good vegan market in Hackney Downs that has uh, a, a policy about saying that a certain percentage of its store owners shouldn't be white cis males, you know. Um, and uh, so I think that's something we could be looking at. The business rates is a big issue as well. I know for small small business holders, they're getting really squeezed because of the fact that the property prices are going up and the business rates are linked to that. I think we need to be looking at how we can uh, issue some exemptions to uh, small business holders, and, and uh, especially if they're you know being very good employers to, to local people. Um, the housing cost going up is also means that you know service workers are getting driven out, and there's that kind of social cleansing aspect of it as well that I'm, I'm sure you know, we're, all, we're all aware of, and we need to be looking at all kinds of ways that we can address that, because otherwise Hackney's going to completely lose its character. Um, I think that it's important that uh, you know there is more transparency, going back to what you said as well. I think if we have freedom of information requests, they should all be published online as well. They, we shouldn't be you know just keeping those a secret. Um, just to go to your point about um, uh, faith and family, um, I, what, the work I do with the uh, Hackney Winter Night Shop, I'm not religious myself, but um, that's a lot of Catholic churches come together and, and people of no faiths and all faiths go and help out there. And I think linking up these different groups is really important. I mean, it's, it's great supporting individual faith groups, but actually th things like this, where we're, we're coming together as a whole community is really good, and the work that's been done here is absolutely excellent. Um, and I think you're wrong to say that family isn't as valued as it used to be. I think people are really starting to see in an, in an era where they're sort of um, atomised by social media, people are looking to the family as a, as a source of, of support, and I think, well, yeah, that's something that we should be supporting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I think I have, if you see my manifesto, some of the um, uh, issues that you have raised already highlighted in the game. So, um, it's uh, actually the policy of credit, and it's not going to solve it. Existing policy is to have, they have just committed uh, green and labor the other day that has been that they want to make the whole happy citizen and make it as, as expensive as possible the citizen. Yeah, so yes, they, they have said that already. So, uh, uh, what it is is that the, the commuters, the, the real culprits, have left day one. We just introduced the sympathizer in my area uh, six months ago, eight months ago. And after that, the, the residents, local residents, are there to pay day in day out with the inconvenience of buying the permits, correctly displaying it, make a mistake. Being so active campaigner, I've had to find already. Because you know people make mistakes, you know, you, you see. So that is simply not fair, uh, and presidents must not be penalized for the um, So just, just, just back on the parking, I don't want to spend too much time parking. We haven't doubled parking permits, we've doubled them for the most polluting cars. That's what we've done, and I'm absolutely proud of that, because if you've got cars that are polluting, they should cost more. You can switch to cars that are less polluting, and the parking permits will cost less. On the hours and on their introduction, we've always worked with residents. And while I think the parking CPZs are a good thing, and I would like to see them roll out across the borough, they need to be implemented with local residents, they need to be shaped by local residents. I'm really proud that through the work with communities, uh, and their representatives in this area. We've introduced minibus bays so that the schools can be accommodated uh, in this area, whether they're registered or not. And that's something that we're really pioneering in this area, looking at business permits and other things. On faith and family, I think I'd echo a little bit of what Alistair said. I absolutely believe uh, in the role of faith in our civic life. I also believe in the role of people that have no faith as well. And it's how we balance those and our flourishing existence that's really important in Hackney. And also family should be all types of family. It's not just one type of family. Uh, and they have a colossal role. And obviously, 
and we're out there supporting them. On dogs, I was just uh, discussing with Pauline, obviously licensing went, I think, in the late 80s uh, under the Tories. I'm sympathetic to dog licensing. I can't implement it as mayor and neither can any of my colleagues, but I think it's a bit like the CPZ discussion. We've just got to be careful that the responsible pay the licence and some of those that are irresponsible and causing some of those issues out in the community don't. And it's how you balance that and then what do you do with the money and how do you implement it in a cohesive way. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be very quick because I know that you want to to women to ask questions. Speakers have already spoken about car parking, so I'm not going to repeat it. I believe uh, that Mike, please. Mike. Oh, I believe that... I'm not going to repeat what I said. I believe the Green Party is going to show a video, so you'll be able to look at what everybody said. In terms of dog licence, I think it's a very intriguing idea, but I just want to make a point. People say that a dog is the only weapon that can't be used against its owner, and not all dogs in Hackney are pets. And when we talk about violence, we also need to look at the role of dogs and whether some people should be keeping dogs in terms of gangs. Thank you. Coming on to faith communities, um, you'll see from the Women's Equality Party Manifesto and all our documents, we, think we very much want caring to be valued equally with money making. Most of the caring in this country, whether it's for children or one another or for older people, starts within the family. And it also goes beyond the nuclear family to extended families into communities. So um, I think your use of family to me is synonymous to where we talk about caring. Thank you. We'll take the last three questions. Uh, one lady there, one from tomorrow, and then maybe a couple more people want to do it. Okay, let's take the first three first. Yes. Um, in my it's really in response to something that the candidate for the Women's Equality Party said when she called um, the women on Hackney Kids. And um, I've had that quite a bit. So I wanted to ask whether the women, candidate from the Women's Equality Party truly believes that 50% of the candidate for women. 45% think my own backgrounds, whether she truly believes that they are tokens, um, and if she does not believe that they have the skills or the experience to do the jobs that they've been elected. I'm not criticising anyone in particular, that just because an organisation has some BAME faces doesn't mean that there isn't an issue with institutional racism. Institutional racism, to me, is something very different from direct discrimination, and it's different from saying that people are racist. Or, and it was Pauline and not me who used the word token. These, I did not use the word token. You can watch the video again, I'm dead certain, because that's not a word that I use. Uh, sorry, yeah, it was actually for uh, Pauline. Yeah, sorry. Pauline. Sorry. Okay, done. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, why, why some people uh, have to steal, steal things and uh, police uh, do nothing? Uh, for example, uh, um, my friend, she, uh, she was by, uh, she was bought two motorcycles and. Uh, both is lost, and police says, and I'm sorry. Wow. Thank you. Uh, please question. Uh, Landville, maybe you could just do a quick response. <laughs> um, well, the, the real challenge, anyone that's been in contact with the police, whether they're at a community level or whether they're me as mayor, is that they're incredibly stretched. So all the things that we took for granted, like community policing, uh, all of the community reassured to being able to follow up incidents like that, that is all a lot harder and harder and harder. And that is because they've lost one in four police officers in Hackney. You cannot have a discussion about crime and policing without recognising one in four of our police have gone. When I was first elected in 2006 as a councillor in Hoxton, there was one PC. There was a PC for each ward. Within six months, there were six introduced by a Labour mayor and a Labour government. And they were decimated under Boris Johnson and the coalition government, Tories and Lib Dems. And that is what we're dealing with. We don't have community reassurance, they can't do the outreach, and they're struggling to respond to emergencies. And I don't blame them for that. They're doing as best a job as they can. But until we get those resources back, uh, and putting up council tax is a stopgap. You know, the Mayor of London's had to do that. And to hear Amber Rudd yesterday, 
and uh, in a debate in City Hall saying that we've given uh, police more resources because we're allowing uh, people like Mayor Sadiq Khan to just put up camp stats. That's simply not good enough when you're dealing with the type of crisis that we're facing around youth violence that we discussed earlier, or theft, uh, as you're uh, uh, describing. We need okay. better resources. We'll get one more quick response. Just very, very quickly. Um, like I said before, there's no point waiting for central government to try and give money for, that, for police. They're not going to do anything until after Brexit, the shambles is sorted. So we need to look, we still need to be campaigning, and we must campaign to get that money back and to get those officers on the street. And we need to uh, enhance our Safer Neighbourhoods team so that we've got that community um, support. But also we need to look at how we're supporting um, ex-offenders, because we want to make sure that ex-offenders aren't becoming re-offenders, because you know, that's going to reduce the, the amount of crime a lot with a preventative stage. But yeah, I'm sorry to hear about your case. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, Hello, everyone. Um, I've been listening quite, you know, very interesting to hear everyone. And um, I know we've had a lot of conversation on the controlled parking zone and everything. My question is related to that. However, I was thinking when you talked about controlled parking, if I'm not mistaken, you said that um, some of the London, the money and things like that, they don't go to London, they go to other parts of the country. To me, that's not really relevant, and I don't really care where the money goes. Because if I'm paying for parking my car outside my house, it's affecting my finances directly. If I'm not mistaken, and if the statistics are correct, because we were talking about evidence, if 91% of happy residents were against control parking zones, where is the democracy? Why are we not being heard? I feel that's quite yeah. oppressive. Because if you're asking me for something, I'm telling you that I'm against this. It's still going ahead. You're raising the council tax that I'm paying. I don't get housing benefit. My tax rates are completely are complete zero. I have three children. I'm working all day, all night to survive. And now I'm paying for a car that I need for a meal for myself. I'm paying happy. Now, being my mayor, I would like you to speak up for me and I would like you to ensure my safety in terms of my children. But I'm now paying for my car along with all the other things. I don't care whether the money goes to London or whether it goes to other parts of the country. I want to know how is this is going to help me in terms of my finances. Thank you, Maria. Let me say the next question. I'm watching. You've seen my son in the by the way, so otherwise you're going to be holding up. My question is my question is uh, regarding mental health. Uh, so I know there's some statistics that show uh, Hackney actually has one of the highest rates of admission when it comes to mental health. And when it comes to family members, they find it very difficult in terms of supporting the patient and the, or the victim suffering from mental health. And I think Harini touched on it briefly in the first question. Uh, what are we doing in Hackney to try and help family members navigate through the uh, red tape which there is when it comes to mental health, to try and get the help for the patient uh, that, that they so desperately need. Because what happens usually is family members are calling on these mental health services and they're hitting a brick wall and they, they, uh, they're turning into despair really. So I want to know how we can reduce the red tape and try and get uh, minimise the red tape and get the help that these uh, patients so really need. Thank you very much. Okay, um, and that's his wife now, we will ask a question. I've got a better question to ask. <laughs> Firstly, I'd just like to say, so I am, uh, I've been living in, in Hackney my whole life, but at the end of this month I'm actually moving out. So my, my work might not really matter to you anymore, but it definitely matters to me because I actually want to come back to Hackney. I'm one of the people who've grown up in a generation where I can no longer afford to live in Hackney anymore. I've been priced out of my own borough, mm. who I have contributed to for the whole of my life. At the beginning of my career, I worked and lived in Hackney, and now I have to leave Hackney because I cannot afford to live here anymore, and I'm on what would be considered a, a better than average salary. So I want to be able to come back to this borough, so what are the provisions for me to do so? Philip, I, I just looked up through your manifesto and, and pages 11 and 12, showing me houses that I can't actually afford to live in. It's absolutely disgusting that we've got, you're showing properties there, you're touting to me properties that I can't live in anymore because they're absolutely unaffordable for anyone on a middle, on a, kind of considered as a middle, a middle salary. I want to know how I'm going to be able to come back to Hackney. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. 
So to, to the, the three points, what I was saying about car tax is relevant because the Conservative government has taken all of London's council tax, sorry, car tax that you're paying. So the cost of owning a car isn't just CPZ, it's car tax, insurance, running it, vehicle excise duty, all the rest of it. None of that money comes to London anymore. All of our transport infrastructure is now underpinned by TfL's fares, council tax, and CPZ income. No other part of the country has that set up. And that's what I said was disgraceful, and that does matter. Because the CPZ money that we raise is spent on our roads and our transport infrastructure. And the only way we can guarantee that you can park outside your home in a borough like Hackney, even with the lowest levels of car ownership at some of the lowest levels, is to have CPZs. I believe they're fairly implemented. No part of Hackney has voted 91% except on an individual road. We do not implement where roads vote against unless it damages having a coherent area. So if seven roads vote yes and there's one road in the middle that votes no, we will implement it on that road. Because we know that as soon as the CPZ goes in around that road, that road will come back to us and say they want a CPZ because everyone's now parking on that road. And you cannot do that quickly enough to accommodate the community. So that's why you do occasionally get roads in Hackney that vote against, that get included in CPZs. But if whole area votes no, then there are no CPZs. Uh, that, that, that's, that's how we implement it. On mental health, I absolutely agree with you. And there are serious weights for mental health.